Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video today, we're going to be talking about a few different ways that you can mimic a beauty macro style portrait without having a macro lens. So there's a few sneaky little things that you can do to really replicate the effect that a macro lens will give an image. So I am going to preface this video today by saying that some of these adjustments that we're going to talk about in this video will affect the quality of your image. And there's really no doubt about it. And there's not too many ways that you can kind of avoid the quality reduction that we're going to go through today, but I absolutely know what it's like to be in the position where you may not be able to afford a macro lens. You might have an idea that you really want to try out on your next photo shoot and you just can't seem to get the composition or style of photograph that you want because you are missing that lens. And this was me about five years ago when I didn't have my own macro lens. I was hiring a lens from time to time from a place in Melbourne and I had really started to get into beauty photography. I had so many different ideas and all I wanted to do was just experiment and really do lots of different beauty shoots and kind of just try so many different things out. But I felt like I was really limited because I didn't have that kind of lens that I needed, which was a macro lens. And the macro lens that I wanted in particular and what a lot of them do for beauty portraits, especially when you're getting a length of around 100 millimeters, is it's going to flatten out the features a little bit more on a subject's face. So it's going to make some of the features appear a little bit more flattering. Uh, you're not going to get as much distortion that you will with a wider portrait angle lens, which is a lot of the time what people do own. So when I'm talking about a wider portrait lens, it could be anything from around 35 millimeters to about 85 millimeters, where you'll sort of notice that distortion in the facial features, which is generally not what you want all the time for beauty photos. Then there's also the hurdle of overcoming the macro aspect of the lens. So obviously a lot of the time with beauty portraits, you wanna get in close. You wanna be able to single out certain features of the face, or you might really wanna pick up that nice detail on the skin. You just wanna get in close so it kind of has that beauty macro effect. And unfortunately with a lot of portrait lenses, sometimes you can't get in close enough. Your minimum focal distance will not allow you to, and you can only have a very limited viewpoint with your subject with certain lenses. So without further rambling, I am going to go through a couple of points that you can use in your next shoot if you're finding that your portrait lenses are maybe a little bit too wide, your minimum focal distance might be too far back and you need to zoom in a little bit. We're gonna go through some ways that you can alter these photos in post to kind of give it that macro beauty effect. So my first tip is kind of an obvious one, I will admit, and it is to crop in. So depending on the size of your camera's sensor, this could really affect the quality of the image that you're going to be working on. So I really would keep this in mind if you're using a camera with a small sensor or mobile phones, this may not work as well. But if you're using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, then you should really be able to have a little bit of freedom with what you do here. So most of the time I like to do my cropping in Capture One or Lightroom. And first I'll open my image and really start to position the cropping where I think it should be. So composition wise with beauty, you're really going to be creating a much smaller crop on the image. You're going to be tightening it up a lot more on the face or certain features of the face. So you really want to zoom in to kind of get that macro effect to make it look like you have used a macro lens. Once you've got your crop positioned where you want it, then I would move on to the next step. And the next step would be to flatten out the image. So once again, you can do this in Lightroom or Capture One or even Photoshop, but I usually like to do this in Capture One or Lightroom first off before I move the image into Photoshop. So for this, we need to go to an adjustment called perspective. And we really need to move the slider in a way that really flattens out the image a lot more and flattens out the features of the subject. So quite often, like I said, if you're photographing with a wider lens or a wider portrait lens, say of around 50 millimeters even, which is quite standard, you'll tend to find that there is a bit of distortion in the facial features. So really to bring this down a little bit and flatten out the features, you would just move this slider around to make sure that it's kind of moving the features in a way that sort of flattens them out a little bit more. And by just doing those two adjustments with using crop and perspective, you'll start to notice that it will give the effect of using a longer length macro lens. And now for my third tip, which is actually to move the image from either Capture One or Lightroom into Photoshop. This is where we're going to resize the image. And I usually find it is a good idea to resize the image because it will help you to have a little bit more scope with your retouching. And as we all know, beauty retouching can be quite a detailed process and you really need to have a little bit more detail in the image. Because we've used a lens that's a bit wider to take the image, and we have used a further out focusing distance, we need to keep this in mind when resizing our image, we're not gonna have as much detail to work with up close. We're actually not gonna have as much image to work with up close if we've cropped the image, which we have. So in doing this, I would usually resize the image to a much larger size, and Photoshop does tend to do a pretty good job with this. I would usually go into the image size adjustment in Photoshop, and then I would usually select the option to preserve details, and this is more so for enlargements. I would also make sure to resize 
resize the image to around 3000 pixels wide at a minimum. And this is mainly due to the fact that DSLRs and mirrorless cameras these days can really have quite large sensors. So we really wanna replicate that a little bit and have a little bit more room to work with our retouching. So once you click OK and the image has been resized, those are a few of my main tips for replicating a macro style portrait image. And then I would go to edit on as usual in Photoshop. So these are just a few little tricks that you can use if you do not have a macro portrait lens. I really do find that this is a good way to replicate some of those features of those kinds of photographs. And especially if you can't afford a macro lens just yet, this is a really good sneaky way to bypass having to actually go and purchase one. Obviously though, as I said, quality can really be affected by using some of these features, but hey, if you're really just wanting to experiment with some new work, with some new beauty photos, or some macro style images in general, then this is a really good way to go. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video today and I hope you learned something new. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I'll be posting a lot more content in future. Make sure to put down in the comment section below if you've got any requests for me because I'm always open to taking more requests for my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching again and I will see you in the next video. Bye.